Hello, it's Dr. Alan Yim. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Petrucci Music Library. The Petrucci Music Library, also known as IMSLP, is, uh, contains hundreds of thousands of works. Currently, it says 532,000 plus scores, and they're always adding to this. Now, if you want to find a specific composer or a specific work, you can just type something in the search bar. So let's suppose I wanted to find Beethoven's Moonlight Sonata. I could just try typing in Beethoven Moonlight. And you can see here, up comes the Piano Sonata. Now for some assignments, you may be asked to find an orchestral piece. Um, you can see here, there are many, many versions of this. Sometimes you can get ones where it's actually the composer's writing and there's a little bit of a preview here but you can see this is actually in Beethoven's hand and then if you scroll down a little bit farther you'll see some printed scores this is a very very popular piece so there are many versions of it now you may also be asked to just search for something more general say uh, a piece in a certain time period and maybe you don't know who the famous composers are say during the romantic period well you could just type in Google famous composers of the Romantic era and you'll get a list. Or maybe you want to find an orchestral piece. You could be kind of creative and say famous composers of the Romantic, how about symphony, which is a piece for orchestra. Okay. And then it might have slightly different composers here, which it does. So, and here you could see you know, maybe there's a handful of these. Some of these people are more famous than others. So I would recommend that you choose someone that you know, or maybe that, you know, someone that you like. I am going to show you a specific one that I used in an example for a project or a homework assignment, and that is Richard Strauss. So I'm going to go back to Petrucci and I'll type in the search bar here. Okay, so, well, actually, I lied. I'm going to show you a different way of looking. We're gonna to go to scores, and I'm going to type in for the, well, I'm gonna look for the composer for Strauss. Okay, so up here, I'm going to go to S. I know how to spell his name, so it's S-T-R-A, and let's see if I can find him. So you could see how many composers, there's just so many. Most of these people are not famous and only have maybe a few pieces. But if I look, here's Richard Strauss, looks like Richard Strauss. He's a German composer and I click on it, he comes up. Okay, so there's a lot of information in this database. You could find his biographical information. You see his dates here, 1864 to 1949. And then down below, you see lists of his music that, you know, that he wrote. Most of the major composers, I would say, wrote at least, you know, in the neighborhood of 50 to 100 works, but some wrote many more. And then there's a few who wrote slightly less. The piece that I will show you right now is titled Don Juan. So I'm just going to click on that. And up comes Don Juan. There's many places to click on this. So the first are the performances, but you want to scroll down to sheet music. Now in this case, there's only one option here, but you want to get the complete score usually. And here's a little preview of it. But to get it, I'm going to click on this thing that says complete score. Now you notice it says you have to pay for it, but you don't. You really just have to wait 15 seconds and then it'll pop up. I actually subscribe to this and it's, it's inexpensive. It's $28 a year and it's worth it because I download a lot of things and I use this database all the time. So here's Don Juan. And one of the most notable things about this is on the left side, you notice there's a line that connects all of these systems of music, you know, all of these lines of music. Each one of these represents an instrument or a group of instruments, starting with the two flutes, then the two piccolos, the oboes, the horns. 
it's in what we call score order. So it's, it starts with the woodwinds, then the brass, then the percussion, and then the strings at the bottom. So here you see the strings, violin, uh, viola, cello, and bass. The violins are split into two groups. And then above that, here's the percussion, the harp, glockenspiel, the cymbals and triangle. Then above that come the brass, starting with the horns at the top, trumpet, trombone, and tuba. And above that, finally, the woodwinds, flute, oboe. Here's the English horn. It's like a bigger oboe, clarinet, bassoon, and the contra bassoon. If you ever see something that says contra, it just means it's a lower version of that instrument. So contra bass, whatever, or contra bassoon, uh, contralto, these are all lower ranged um, from the normal. If you just say alto, okay, that's kind of the low female, but contralto, that's even lower. All right, um, this has a lot of stuff in it. But what I want to point out is that as you look at a score, you should try to glean as much as you can from this. So this is the title. This is the composer. His first name is abbreviated. Usually the composer is found actually over here on the right. The OP20 means opus number. So opus is usually a sign when they publish the work. So maybe you could kind of consider this to be the 20th published work. It's not necessarily a chronological number for when the composer wrote the piece because oftentimes they'll start writing something, they'll put it in a drawer, they'll start working on something else. Maybe they have a commission that they have to finish, they get that published. Later on, they pull this thing out that they started and they finish it. But it's actually an earlier work and it gets a later opus number. So the opus numbers are a little bit unreliable in terms of chronology. For the really, really famous composers like Mozart and Bach, they have actually historians who have gone in and tried to put their numbers or their, their works in order and they give them a, a number according to their system, which is different from the opus numbers. Okay, over here in the upper left, this is usually where the tempo is. And here it says Allegro Molto con brio. Of course, you have to know that uh, you have to know what Allegro means. You should know this is fast. It's very fast and it's with life. It's with vigor. With con I don't know how you want to translate that, but it's a fast and vigorous tempo. This little marking here is the meter. So that tells you it's in 2-2, two, two, two half notes per bar. And we could see that in this measure. These vertical lines here divide the piece into equal units of time. Now, this measure only has two half notes. So if we were counting one, two, one, two, it would just be one, two, and actually let me think how fast this piece. So that's about how fast it goes. One, two, one, two, one, two. Notice, Sometimes the bar lines are farther apart or closer together. And sometimes you see a lot of notes in one bar. The more notes you have crammed into that bar, the faster those notes have to go to get through the bar in the same amount of time. So if you have two notes, it's just da, da in this case. But if you have this, it's ba da da dum da da dum right? So this, you have to get these notes through faster. Now, if you have something like this, I can't even say this fast enough because these 16th notes go by in the space of one and there's there's eight of these notes. So eight notes in the one, two. So I'm not going to try to sing these notes, but it goes very fast. And then over here, there's a group of 11 notes that have to fit in. So here it's eight and here it's 11. The harp plays these, and so do the strings. It says glissando. So that just basically means it's like a whoosh of notes going up the scale. And you can see in this piece, most of the motion of the notes is rising up. And that um, sort of gives you this feeling of lifting off. And Don Juan is a very uh, bold and <laughs> bad character, the anti-hero. So this kind of describes his personality, this kind of 
you know, when he comes onto the scene, he makes a big impression, and these rising figures kind of depict that character. And then maybe these half notes, dong, bong, it's like you're announcing his arrival into the this piece that describes his character and maybe some of his adventures. Okay, after you look at the score and try to figure out maybe how it's going to sound fast, slower, fast, and maybe you recognize some of these rhythms that I'll talk about later, such as the dotted rhythm, which is a long and a short, da da da, long, short, long, okay? You might listen for these. The next step would be to go and go to maybe YouTube or Apple Music or however you use Spotify and look up this piece and take a listen. So we'll just hear the opening of this and you can see, does this meet your expectations? Now the nice thing about this, this is YouTube. Many of these pieces are have been placed in YouTube with the score. And sometimes there's even a line or something to point you along the way. This one just has the score, it doesn't point you along, but I will help you out by pointing the direction. So here we go. Okay, so it would help if I started from the beginning. Let's try that again. Okay, so you see, that's how fast the opening goes. I'll play it one more time. So, and now we're on to the second page. I will let you go and explore on your own, find something you like, listen to it in YouTube, examine the score, see what you can find. I hope you enjoy this and I'll see you in the next video.